seen you in almost a year. What are you talking about? We hang out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's been nice. But it's, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome, Commander Smith. And I am the Commander Smith. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> Welcome to uh, episode 150, where we don't know what we just are winging it. <laughs> you are the Commander Smith, Lowry. You are the one. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Can we? Let's redo that. No hell no. Let's say. Welcome, let's, Commander Smith. We're keeping we're the Commander home. Smith. <laughs> he is Lowry Smith. <laughs> and he is Adam Smith. <laughs> don't worry. I guess we're cousins. <laughs> Welcome. Wait, what did you say? I am the Commander I Smith. Don't know. <laughs> I told you I was really tired. All right. Wait, wasn't that on purpose? That wasn't a mess up, was no, it? No, that was a mess up. That was <laughs> That's total amazing. Brain discombobulated. Or it's just my violent takeover of the show. Yeah. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> I am the Commander Smith. <laughs> oh that's awesome that's a good uh, yep, way to start 150. episode 150 totally uh we totally got this down applause it's a it's a huge episode because not only are we uh is it 150 did you ever think we get to 150 i mean i knew we'd get to 150 i just always thought it would be our family we're the only listeners <laughs> It just really, we are the only people listening to each other. It was just us talking. It's kind yeah. of still what it is. Um, but yeah, we got a special show because our 150th episode also coincides with what? Like in between New Year's and Christmas? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> what? No, what are we doing today? That's what I meant. <laughs> End of the year. Yeah, it's just kind of special. Top 10. Oh. Yeah, We're doing our favorite stuff. cards that were printed this year. Top 10 mm-hmm. style. Of this most amazing year, 2020. It, the year of Commander, as uh, Wizards announced it. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of really, a lot of good cards printed. I think everybody can admit a lot of good cards. Well, it's, um, and we're not even doing, like, reprints. If you add in, you know, there's two reprint sets. But then think of that. Think of all the secret layers that were printed. <laughs> Those yeah, are pretty much besides The Walking Dead. Everything else is reprints. So there's a lot of amazing cards that got printed there. Shit. Yeah. We could have I want a... Glenn on here now. I love yeah. Glenn. <laughs> I didn't even you think could. about that. That is a new card. I, I guess yeah. I could put Daryl on here too. Yeah. So our top ten, maybe uh, eleven, fucking... twelve, thirteen, or fourteen or fifteen, but it's ten and we're I definitely to have it. six or I have thirteen. But like they're combined. So I mean I did that last year. <laughs> I'm at least consistent. Yeah. You convinced me to knock my list down and then you have 13. What the hell is going on? <laughs> no, I cheated a little bit on this too. Cause I have yeah, groups see? of cards. So, uh, we are also including, of course, stump the Smith savant. Larry has to follow up last week with his amazing first card. And then his negative second card, which your combined total, I think was around, 90 points because you lost five points off of that. Okay. So we'll see if you can follow it up this week. I consider some... that a passing grade, 90 out of 200. Yeah. <laughs> if you grade it on a curve, it depends on everybody else did. <laughs> no, there's nobody else. Yeah, so, no one yes. else has said how, how they've done. Uh, and then, yeah, we got our one spec. Uh, and that should probably finish up the episode. So we're just going to talk about a bunch of M20. cool cards. M20. M20 spec. Which... We'll talk about it there, but we have gone through these, and both of our picks, I think, are pretty picks. similar to what they yeah. were. <laughs> but now we're we have a bit. We're doing the one spec, whereas before it was rotating cards, and these are really good cards. And mm-hmm. yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, so, how was your Christmas? What did you do for Christmas? Uh, we went over to the. Well, I mean, we had a blizzard on Christmas Eve. That's a good point. Day before. Yes. Like snow, like cities six legit to eight inches. The cities don't normally get blizzard warnings. It always is the metro, you know, around the mm-hmm. metro because you have a lot of buildings that break up wind a little bit, and they're a little more strict on when they call it a blizzard. Uh, you don't have as much farmland and stuff. That's what can get dangerous out in the fields and stuff. So, but the cities legit got blizzard warning because it was blowing like 
freaking crazy. You couldn't see anything. I couldn't see across the street. Yeah, it was. I couldn't see the house across the street. It was just like, whoa. Yeah, it was pretty is, insane. It took my wife. My uh, wife. It's, it's a 25 to 30 minute drive, and it took her an hour 10 to Jeez. get home. Yeah. So, and she left early, and it was, yeah, it was a pretty intense blizzard there. And so and then the next day, it was like, negative degree and we're mm. like we had plans to be with uh my wife's family because they are our bubble people yep <laughs> your bubble uh, people <laughs> our bubble people and uh we decided not to go because the roads look like poo yeah and so we pushed it to christmas day and that was a good time nice you know um, yeah we did uh we did go to cindy's parents the next day it wasn't too bad. We actually drove two cars. We had to because we were, not that we had to, but part of the boys' Christmas presents were getting two new kitties. And oh. so when we were out at Cindy's parents, it was also close to where we were getting the cats, picking up the cats. Mm. And uh, so we drove two cars out there. It wasn't too bad. We took our time. The roads were plowed for the most part. It was just more slippery than anything. I think yeah. we felt a yeah. little more confident because... Both our cars have new tires and they drive pretty good in the snow, especially the truck. So, so that was a good time. We went out to her family and open presents. And then Cindy went to her, we got the cats from her coworker. So they're two boys, which we named Buddy and Clive. Get it? It's pretty good. Like Bonnie and Clive? Yeah. <laughs> we knew well, one of them was a buddy. And then at one point it was Buddy and or Peanut and Buddy. So it was going to be like, Peanut butter, peanut buddy. <laughs> but it just... I, w- I wish it was that one. Yeah, we just didn't... Uh, the peanut didn't. wasn't really sticking. And the other one seemed like it was more of a buddy cat. So then we changed it. Cindy's like, what about Buddy and Clyde? And I was like, I like Clyde, but let's do Clive. Because hmm. we're changing Bonnie, so why not change Clyde? So, yeah. that It was uh, pretty sweet. Kids it are loving a, the kitties. Oh, the cats are so cute. And the, it's kind of nice because the the boys now have like three hours out of the day where they're playing with the cats. So it's taken up another like, you nice. know, it's a lot of times because we're locked in here, I'm trying mm-hmm. to find things for them to do. And they like just make a disaster of the whole house. <laughs> well, now it's still making a disaster of the whole house, but they're bringing the cats into the living room and then bringing every single blanket they own and pillow and stuffed animal in there. So it just turns into this big fort. Oh, yeah. When we surprised them, they came in the room. One of the cats had taken a dump on the carpet. So (laughs) they came in and it was very, it was, it wasn't the the reaction we wanted from them. We wanted them to come in and like freak out. But instead they came in the room and they're like, oh, what's that smell? (laughs) And then they saw the one cat and it looks like our old cat that we just put, you know, Allie put down. Yeah. And they're, they're freaked out. They're like, Allie? So they thought like re reincarnated Allie. So they're they were kind of freaked out with it. And I was oh, like, no. I stopped recording and about two minutes later is when they actually were like really excited because they realized these are new little kitties. Yeah. But they thought <laughs> we had Allie? <laughs> we what? brought Allie back from the dead, <laughs> even though we oh, just showed boy. them the box of ashes that the whatever. I don't know. It was Yeah, you're doing some magic shit right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that was that. Cindy's parents got me some magic cards. I'm very happy about that. Uh, yeah. Got uh, Zendikar, dude. The Zendikar boxes, collector boxes, are just solid, and they sold out on Channel Fire. But we should really be a Channel Fire. But they should sponsor us because we the second hey, week in a row. Talk- sponsor <laughs> us. They sold I'm, out of that. I'm the that- Commander Smith. <laughs> he, he is the commander smith <laughs> i'm just adam <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm his just cousin make fun of myself all, all episode <laughs> but yeah i mean that bundle was 200 bucks and you got the collector's thing and then all that other stuff that we talked about before with the soul foil soul ring and all that stuff so but it's sold yeah. out that sold out quickly um otherwise i was going to order myself one after christmas hmm. uh it seems cool I, I uh, like the chi- Channel Fireball stuff going on right now, too. Yeah, so. they continue it. So they have the Cal... I, I want to say Caldium, Cal- but it's it's Cal- Caldime. 
They have the bundle there where you can get the set boosters for 140 yeah. and get all that stuff. I think so. they're just going to try and those bundles will last as long as they have product and then right. they'll be done whenever. So I'm glad I got one set because I was thinking about just spending like seven, eight bucks on those full art lightning bolts and I think 10, 15 on the paths. Mm-hmm. They'll probably drop after everything gets out there, but. Yeah, I think they're starting to come down as Channel Fireball is sitting there, sitting there, sending their stuff out. I know those soul rings were at 80 when they first released them because mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of people that had them, and now they're down to about 20. So gotcha. uh, I think those are a potential spec at some point because, you know, those will come down a bit, and they're completely different art than anything that's out there, yeah. and I think that those will come right back up. That Path to Exile art is crazy. Oh, it's amazing. I was really happy to get that. I The one thing I'm a little disappointed is those lightning bolts aren't foil. I wish they were foil, but they still look really good. Um, all right. So that was our promotion for Channel Fireball. Channel Fireball, if you want to promote Lowry's show, you can. He is the Commander Smith, and I am his cousin. <laughs> uh, all right. One last thing. Do you have any plans for... Oh, you know what? I told you this beforehand. I am drinking a beer. What? And see what I'm drinking? Northeast. One of my old favorites. I probably haven't drank this in... in over a year because you got me in the kick of all the you know craft beers and all that stuff that i kind of was steered away. the other part of nordice is it goes down like water for me so oh, I, it's good yeah so this is my first sip of this beer oh oh that's fantastic i, like I nordice. that what are you drinking larry <sighs> water <laughs> water not be- i'm so not tired be- i just need not because hydration yeah. and naps <laughs> <laughs> Dad, baby, life. baby girl's waking up from in between ten and five thirty, about every hour and a half. So, oh, man. she's killing. You even, yeah, that that break of sleep just kills after a while. Yeah, it's terrible, terrible. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not forming memories. I didn't remember <laughs> that I let the dog out today. Oh, really? like, yeah. When I was doing dinner, wife came in. I let dog out. And then after dinner, Kirsten's like, where's Taka? I was like, <laughs> ah, <fuck."> whoopsies. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. All right. Well, let's try to get through this. Oh, man, this is going to be an interesting stump. To yes. S- stump to Smith 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 might be really difficult right now. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to it because uh, we got a lot of cards to talk about and all that fun stuff. So uh, let's hit our tags. You be, you can become a patron. Uh, you just go on our patron page. A dollar or more gets you into the Discord, which also gets you into the league. It still isn't too late to join the league if you want. You're just taking zeros for the first season. We're on to second season right now where everybody's opening four more packs and starting with more points. Uh, $5 or more gets you Proxy of the Week. This week's Proxy of the Week was, I just sent it out today, Hall Breacher. Hall Breacher. Yeah. which there is also a proxy time video that will be coming out. I'm not going to say the same time like I did last time because that was a lot of work. But if it isn't out by the time you listen to this cast, it will be within a day or two of that. Uh, it was interesting because I, I started editing that one. And Hall Breacher, the only thing I had, like I, I had his arm going over the card. And mm-hmm. then I was like, I don't see anything else I really want to edit because I don't like covering text boxes very often. So I was done after five minutes. <laughs> I was just like, Ooh. this is the shortest video ever. And then I started tinkering with his scarf and stuff. And then it turned into a 30 minute episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so it, that is it, art. it's an interesting episode with that. Cause uh, I, I'm trying to f- mess with the text coming through. Cause I know there's a lot of people, including myself. I'd like to be able to see the text, know yeah, what the card do. is doing. I, I can do cover some part, words, yeah. But as long as you can still see what's going on, um, then it's fine. But anyway, so proxy time video. Oh, there are. Oh, I'll get to YouTube when I get to YouTube. Uh, so that's proxy of the week. Now let's go to YouTube. YouTube is the way to the free way to su- support the show. You just jump on there, subscribe to our channel. Videos are currently going. I didn't really hit it last week, but the three videos that went up last week. One is how to properly ship your cards because there's a ton of people that are doing it awfully including card stores uh and then the other two videos one is for shipping cards under 20 bucks for five cents meaning materials and it also shows um proper way to ship those 
And then the other one's 25 cents for cards that are, I typically don't start putting them in bubble mailers until over 25, 30. So it's showing how to save yourself money on that. So there's three videos. Mm -hmm. They're really short. They're only five to nine minutes long. So uh, those are on there. Uh, check out Twitter. That's where you can see hashtag proxy of the week and hashtag Lowry's not sharing with me, which number two jumped on. Thanks, Lowry. <clears throat> Yeah, that was Mead. I'm I'm interested. He said it was really good. I don't know much about Mead. Um, I just had a buddy that brewed it back in the day, and it was what really is Mead? harsh. I don't Mead even know what it, Mead is. Um, I feel like it's just it's a like medieval a, thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm so how, probably so how do we how are we brewing it, it now? It is. Just kidding. So I'm I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Um, I want to say it's like no, no. I'm not gonna say. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was just from Lord of the Rings. Like this isn't real, but no, yeah, yeah no. man, that stuff's strong. Is it? Yeah. So it's like, it's probably like wine. Okay. But you drink it like the whole bottle, so it's like you're drinking like two thirds of a bottle of wine. <laughs> that so. sounds like a every night for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So that was not sharing with Adam. Also, Lowry has been doing. What did you name it? You named it something that was pretty I call, sweet. I'm calling it a uh, curated MTG. So I am picking a card that I like but don't play. So it's not going to be called like underrated cards or whatever. It's mm -hmm. similar to random card of the day, and there's plenty of people that do that. And so I'm trying to. Is this more of convince you to play with it kind of type thing? Yeah, I would love it if people actually just made comments on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like if people have experience with it or um, they might just be in the same boat as I am. Uh, so like today I, I picked uh, Seedborn Ash, which is five mana tree folk. Um, but when it dies, you go and put three force into play tapped. And it's just like, oh, that's really kind of cool. Could be like abusable ramp, mm -hmm. but like it's not something I've ever built yet, and I don't know. Because you need to have a proper sack outlet for that, otherwise <clears throat> it's just kind of sitting there. Yeah, maybe like, being a blocker. I yeah, that's and I don't think that's good enough for it. But like, if mm -hmm. you have some type of like, I want to say like sneak attack with a way to bring it back and be able to do it a couple I like times. That idea. That could be really powerful. Um, I don't remember if it's basic forest or just forest in general. It's probably basic forest because it's just a common from Lorwyn block. Okay, um, so an old set. <clears throat> yeah, so but it's like seven hundred decks on EDH rack. So I just I find it an interesting card. It's intriguing, but you know, again, some of these cards they might just not be good enough, and that's fine yeah. too. So that's that's kind of what I'm going for is just like cards that like tickle my fancy, but <laughs> you you could almost call it uh, change my mind or something like that. Try to get people to convince you to play it, but so far you just need people to actually respond. Uh, you had people respond to the first one. That was the uh, the, the first blue. Two. Yeah, this one just one. didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done uh, monastery siege, and then last week was. Hull breach? No, not hull breacher. Fucking. <laughs> well, this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun stump the smith because I think I'm getting some stumping going here. Oh boy, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it was a green one as well. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So then the last thing is you guys can direct message us on Twitter or you can shoot us an email. Direct message us that way as well with a fun email at Commander Smith. So. All right, let's move into the actual episode. It's time for everyone's favorite game show, Stump the Smith Savant. All right, this week we uh, Are we not allowed shift. the X-Men music in the background at all? Uh, that won't last very long. I should... <laughs> Start. I should do an opener with that. When did I? Oh no, that is one one of our bits that we'll okay. be getting to soon with the new set. Coming oh, that out. was a different. Okay, that's yeah. what the bit was for. Yeah. Right. Um. So, <laughs> giving you guys a little behind the curtain stuff. Currently, how we have this working, Lowry can't hear the soundboard if we're just on Zoom. 
But if we're through our Discord on sound, he can hear it there. So he's muted on the Discord, but not on Zoom. And then he can hear through Zoom and or hear through the Discord. And I'm muted on Zoom. Follow it? <laughs> no, I didn't. But it makes Anyways, perfect sense. We have two, we're making we have it two work. sources. We have two sources going. Just so Larry can hear the soundboard. All right. If you guys don't remember. I'm going to read the flavor text of a card. Lowry is going to try to guess what that card is. Every wrong guess, he's going to ask yes or no questions. I can only answer yes or no. Every no that I give him is minus 10 points. Every clue I give him is minus five points. If he gets the card rather quickly, we move on, and there are other cards that he can potentially get. Last week, uh, I believe it was 95. Looking at my notes... Last week, you got a 95, and then I think it followed... No, a 90 followed up with a minus 5. So you really got 85. Hmm. Uh, two weeks ago, I had like 195 or something like that. It was ridiculous. So let's see if we can stump the savant who is lacking sleep. So this might be a benefit to me. All right. <clears throat> First card. Vine weathered. He nurtures life among the dead. Pesmilla Militian Poet? Milit Militin Poet? M E L E T I A N Poet. Um Militin? Yeah, Militin? so this is Is this like Urza Saga block? No. It's not Urza, Urza Saga Destiny or Nope, nope, nope. And that's I'm only giving you one on that for yeah, the mail. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Militon? Uh, what is... Okay, so never mind. That's Theros. Theros block? Uh... Kind of? <laughs> I won't give you a no on that. Wouldn't do Theros blocks. themed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll read it one more time. Vine yeah. weathered. Vine or fine? Vine. V-I-N-E. Vine, Vine weathered. Not it's reathered, W R E A T H E E D, reathered, reathered. <laughs> Spell God it out damn. again. W R E A T H E D, wreathed. Oh, wreathed, weathered. <laughs> Vine wreathed. Vine wreathed. I might have read it the right way the first time, and then this time I went weather. For some reason, weather went on my head. I just uh, e erased the R and just spelled yeah. weathered. I'm Vine used to weather all the time. Wreathed. wreathed. He nurtures life among the dead. Pismilla Militin po Poet, whatever his name is. Militian Poet? Mil yeah. Militin. Um, Militin. Vine wreathed. He nurtures. Weather. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stop. He nurtures the dead? What was it? He nurtures life among the dead. Life among the dead? Oh, mm -hmm. this is fucking tough. <clears throat> okay. Um, Ready for a clue? Yes, please. Galaxies are a minor feature in this card. Okay, so is this, this is like a god? Kinda? It's not a god. No, it's not a god. Galaxies is... You can start guessing your colors. You can guess whatever, you know. I, know I mean, to get this. is this monocolored? Yes. Is it black? No. Is it white? No. <laughs> Vine wreathed? Okay, maybe that's green? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, he nurtures life among the dead. Uh, is it a creature card? Yes. It's... Vine it's not Reed. of the Ilsean Grove, right? Are you guessing that? Yeah. You got it! Woo! Are you kidding me? That was <laughs> yeah. it, huh? Well, the next okay. clues were nature seems to be a main characteristic of this card. 
features a temple in the background. I was hoping that kind of throw you off. Lands matter, provides flexibility in multicolor decks. Is a top card, uh, is both a creature and enchantment. But you yeah, the and because part. it's an enchantment, it has that like star galaxy, galaxy thing. Yeah. I see what you're yeah. saying. All right. So you got 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, didn't you got, got a lot there. 55 on that one. All right, so let's jump onto the second one. I think we'll probably get enough for just two on this one. Two. Two. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Which one am I reading here? Okay. You failed. Is it Gerard? G E R R A R D? Gerard? Yeah, I say Gerard. You, yeah. No. You failed, Gerard. You failed the legacy. You failed yourself. I can do no more. Volrath to Karn. I knew that was Volrath. <laughs> <laughs> Volrath to Karn. <clears throat> I do you know failed, this card. Gerard. You failed the legacy. You failed yourself. I can do no more. Volrath to Karn. Mm. Oh, propaganda. Woo! Good one, Lowry. Took me 100%. a hundred percent. All right. Well, you've made it. The I think you can get the third one because that was quick. That was quick as f. All right. Here we go. Let's see if we can do this quick. Right. Uh, Glock, G L O K. Love storms. He'd sit and watch and laugh through the whole thing. I miss him. Squee goblin cabin hand. I know this card too. Um, Glock love storms. He'd oh, I, I know what it is. It's red, uh, one mana yeah. instant. Yeah. You discard your yeah. hand or dis yeah. discard your card. Right. It deals X amount of damage among X yeah. target. Uh, something storm. Yeah. Think of the picture. What is happening in the picture? Oh, we're just getting to the end of the, the bed. I'm not even going to kick it in again because you should get this. Oh, I'll kick it in. God whatever. damn it. <laughs> <clears throat> it is... Uh... Think of red cards. What do they do? I mean, is it lightning storm? Uh, go the other route. Shock storm? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, get away from lightning. What's another thing that red deals with? When you think red, <clears throat> what do you think of? Direct damage storm. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they do, man. Here's one of the clues. Fire is the main idea in this oh, card. Shit, a firestorm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You got me. <laughs> hey, good job. How'd you? You just remember that uh, flavor for that one? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's I'm not stupid. even mad. I'm impressed. That's stupid. I shouldn't be what able you, to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it stumped the Smith Savant. I feel good when I get you stumped a little bit. I don't like those hundreds, but I, I am impressed when you get them. So, all right. Should we? Oh, wait. We do have a top 10. Ready? Top 10 Commander cards. All right. right. So, top 10 of 2020. 20. 2020. Do we want to run it by sets here? Just kind of jump blocks of that? and Or do you have it like numbered 1 to 10? I do, do have, have it, it numbered 1 to 10. Okay. So I do not. And you are. You <laughs> we are. Did not because we, we kind of developed. We talked our about list doing the 10. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to just jump into the sets and then we'll just. We'll go and see if we I can, hit your stuff. We can do however we want to do the, the list. So we are unique individuals. Okay. All right. So why don't we start, since you have a, a, a list of 10, why don't you start with 10 so we can hear your number. We'll get to your number one before I get to mine might not be number one, you know. True. So let's let's start that way. All right. So what is your number 10 card? 10 is the one exception to the rule. Like my rule was like, do I own it? Have I played with it? How do I like it? Like, because these are my favorite cards that have been printed so far. Um, number 10, I do not actually own yet. It's brand spanking new, but I just absolutely love the card. And that is Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. That is a good card. 
the that card did not make my list. That is good. Is it did or didn't make your list? It didn't make my list because I said Commander Legends. I didn't hit anything in there. I just yeah. made comments to it, which yeah, and it just. The card is really, really cool. I, I've really oh, been yeah. liking clones this year with Sakashima, Spark Double, um, you know, that style of card. And it just, if I had played with it, it's probably higher, but I still don't have, I just got my box two weeks ago and I didn't get it in there and I'm kind of waiting uh, for yeah. the other boxes to show up before I spend money. Um. So yeah. Uh, I think the card is super cool. It's really unique with breaking the legend rule. Um, I totally dig it. Yep. Uh, that is a pretty sweet card. I'll I'll continue. I'll I'll jump on your back with that. I'll just because you don't have any more commander legends, right? Or Correct. is that your only one? Uh, okay. I guess I got one more, but doesn't matter. Okay. That one's I'm so not I have super uh, the other half of the Battlelands was my commander. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that they printed. So now we have the full set of the Battlelands. Um, Really happy. I had some of the comments I put for Commander Legends was I'm glad that they went Monarch crazy, which is mm-hmm. amazing because we've been talking about that for years. Both you and I really like Monarch and wish that it was used more. And now I think it might be. It's pretty sweet playing in this the Battle Box League, how the Monarch can switch. And now that there's a lot of cards that you get the Monarch when it comes in is pretty sweet because you can take it without even attacking. And so that's been pretty sweet. I'm glad they made more partners in Commander Legends. So mm-hmm. we have a lot more um, options for partner commanders. And then I guess my other part of it was I like, but this fits with the Monarch, is the courts. I like all those courts that they have, courts of whatever. Each one seems pretty unique and sweet. So that is my, I'll say my 10. Uh, what is your number nine? My number nine is going to be Luminous Brood Moth. That takes away one of mine. Oh, my no. only Ikoria card. <laughs> that might be my only Ikoria card as well. So no, I do I not have any one. others. I got another one. Okay. Uh, Luminous but, is pretty sweet. Luminous Brood Moth is a flyer, but basically, if you have a creature that dies that doesn't have flying, it will come back with a flying token on it. And that, I think, leads to some. It, leads to some really nice resiliency in in mono white or just white in Mm -hmm. general um i think you can get abusive with it uh like people do with uh machaeus the unhollowed and just being able to bring stuff back and forth um i just the card is really fun it's it can be value oriented it's it's very flexible um yeah, I, I, and it's not it's not overcosted for its ability. You know, it's only yeah. four to come out as a three four flyer. So it it yeah. does a lot when it hits the table. It makes you kind of half you know wrath proof a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it and it forces white to do a little bit something different, like because token decks aren't very good with luminous brood moth, and so it forces white to not lean into tokens as much, which it is very good at. So. Um, but I like that it, if you're building with it in mind, you might not be so token centered. So, but I just, uh, yeah, the card's super cool. Yep. And I really don't have much more to add to that because I have it on my list as well. And I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> Your cast is awesome, Lowry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I will hit up something that we just went over, but uh, I have Dryad of the Elysian Grove on my list. Uh, so that is from Stump the Smith, but that yeah. card is just an amazing card. Uh, I did pick it as one of my, I think my one spec to rule them all. Yes, I did do that. Yeah. So I don't know. It just, it helps with mana fixing a little bit. You know, it helps get you more lands out. It's just, any card that does that, and it's only a three drop for that. Like it's just, it's just a good card. It's the two fact, I, four I, as well, so it can it like yeah. can actually block, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. And adding that enchant, enchantment creature makes the fetchability of it, finding tutoring it up, and finding it a little bit. It does make it a little more susceptible to, for enchantments killing it as well. Uh, but being able to tutor that is a lot easier. Uh, but I, the main thing is. The two abilities on it are just mm-hmm. amazing. You know, it could just have the first one. You can play an additional land on each of your turns, and it'd still be a decent card. 
and then the uh, chromatic lantern kind of effect. Because is chromatic making it every basic land type? No, that allows it no, to tap. It just for any allows color. you to tap for anything. Okay, so yeah. this even adding all the basic types to it is really another, powerful. Yeah, another sweet thing to it. So for sure. So that is my number whatever because I don't have a ten. So Larry, <laughs> what you'd is pick your? That, so I didn't pick it. <laughs> so what is your yeah. number eight? Uh, number eight, I went with Keeper of the Accord, which is Commander Legends card, mono white, and basically, it, it allows. It's a very powerful. Don't fall too far behind white card. Mm-hmm. Basically, like that's white's thing. They're like. We're not very good. So if we're doing good, none of our cards help us. But if we're behind, like we normally are, our cards will be okay. But once we get up to your power level, then we drop back again. So if somebody has more land than you, you get to go put a planes into play at the end of each turn. And if somebody has more creatures than you, you get to put a a token into play. Yeah, it's pretty solid. That was uh, borderline going to be the one spec for me. Yeah. Uh, the other week when we did that. Was that last week that we did that? I think it was. Yes. And I, I think it's a, a great card. I'm glad that it's printed. I think it's um helps like focus like white does get. It's kind of like the Mangara from M21. Like that almost made my list too. So it was kind of like a toss up between the two. Um, <laughs> Can it- what? My next card is Mangara. <laughs> nice. That's cool. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, they're both uh, pretty similar because Mangara adds a little bit if you're behind, like you were saying there. Um, you get an advantage if people are playing more than one spell. That's amazing because most commander players aren't just playing one spell each turn. Late no. game maybe a little bit, but you're trying to drop as much as you can. Uh, and then it also, isn't it hindering people from attacking? I, mean, I don't even have the card pulled up. I'm just going off of memory now. Uh, what's the first part of him? All right, I'm pulling it up right now. So it's whenever an opponent attacks <clears throat> with creatures, if two of them are attacking you or Planeswalker, draw a card. So it adds a lot of draw to it. So both these cards just, they're really trying to make white good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> white finally has two good cards. And that, <laughs> yeah. Too. Well, no, because my one spec last week was the uh, Acroma, but that's yeah. like a game winner card protection. So they're, they're good. I at- mean, they've been doing a pretty good job with white, and you can you can build with white, but it's just it's lacking in some of the big things that Commander needs. Yeah. So. All right. So I jumped to mine. Now let's jump back to you again. Number seven. Uh, number seven was one of my doubles, and it was just like. Lands that draw cards. So War Room, which was okay. my one spec last week, and then yeah. also Bonders Enclave from Ikoria. Um, both those cards are like tap three and it to draw a card, plus you know some other condition of War Room is paying life. Bonders Enclave is having a creature with power four or more. Um, I think both are fantastic creations, and I think that's probably the sweet spot for a land drawing cards. Mm-hmm. because four or five mana just is a bit too much and two is too little. Right. Like yep. that's too easy to do. So I think three, like tapping three and a land to draw a card is a, a good sweet spot. Dig it. Well, this is kind of fun because I'm just going to, I'm coinciding my picks with what you're talking about so they can kind of fit together. But oh. so my, one of my picks is, uh, Oh, except, wait, wait, wait. No, no, that works. It is the, where is it? Rare and Mythic Flip Lands from Zendikar Rising. Uh, I like that Mm -hmm. idea of having spells on one side, but then also having the option of the Flip Lands. And they were actually pretty decent. You even have a couple of the Uncommons uh, could make this list too. There's the the Regrowth one, the one that's Mm -hmm. one more than a Regrowth but is also a, a forest, a tapped land on the other side. Uh, I just really like that they've tapped into that, and I kind of want them to continue that because it, I feel we've talked about that before. I feel like this helps with the being monoscrewed being less likely if you're able to make <clears throat> spells that we use every day, like things yeah. that are more 
common. The problem that I know they're going to run into is they don't want to make the, that you don't use those cards anymore. You know, like yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I to, wouldn't be putting them on super powerful cards. No, but, but usable ones would yeah. be kind of nice. You know, so, adding a little extra cost than what the normal one of that card is, but then also making it so it can flip into a land instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, like the regrowth example, I think that's a perfect cost. Like, between, like, do you want to pay one extra to bring a card back, but also have the option of a land, or just want a cheaper version? Mm -hmm. And I think that's at least a good, like, an interesting decision to make. And, yeah, I totally agree with you that uh, the flip land cards are are really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I I just put rare and mythic because we even have the dual flips which are going to be completed here in Keldheim. Keldheim. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have the full set of those, which I think those are good too. Uh, I don't know how much we've talked about that. I don't know how much I'm going to use them because I use the dual lands and the shock lands, and you know I have enough of the other stuff. But I definitely think that those are an option for a lot of people to use those that don't have access to the those cards. So. Uh, All right, what is your number six? Uh, This is another similar one. Uh, Gem Razor from Ikoria, which would be my main one. I was tempted on that one. Yeah. Uh, And then Saw Tusk Demolisher from Commander 2020. Um, So they both have... Which one is that? They both have Mutate. Uh, Saw Tusk Demolisher is green, three colorless. Mutate onto a creature whenever it mutates... Uh, you get to destroy any non-land permanent, and that player gets like a three-three beast. Uh, That's and pretty solid. Gem Razor is mutate for three, and destroy, then destroy yeah. an artifact or an enchantment. So I feel like, and I use them both in my Naith deck, or at least eventually got Nayeth. there mm-hmm. uh, with it. And they um, they both have trample. They're both just like bigger. So like a 4-4 four, four Trampler for 3 that destroys an Artifact or Enchantment. Or a 6-6 six, six Trampler that destroys anything and gives them a 3-3. Three, three. Like, that that seems really cool. I I tend to play more permanent style, like Sorcery Speed anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like, I like it when I have answers and threats as the same thing. Um, and so that, and this covers a lot of that. Um, so I just, I like them a lot and I've been trying yeah. to fit them into more decks, um, as I've gotten more copies of them. I think that is another thing I'd like them to touch on more where I was talking about the flip lands. I like the mutate idea and I kind of want them to keep going with that a little bit. Keep, you know, maybe mm-hmm. a couple of here and there every year or two or something like that. I, I, I really like that mutate idea with it. And that I would I would my thing was like I just didn't like mutate very much. There's a lot of downside to it, and so I'm I'm a little surprised that those are really the only two that I like because that they're you more a lot? yeah they're more like utility. I I felt like a lot of the other ones though they just made them really like they were multi three color stuff. You know the ones that were actually decent, uh, the legend mythics and yeah. And so it made it a little more difficult if you touched on more of. Again, kind of what they were talking about the flip lands. If we did something more of like things that you'd use all the time, like scrying or looking at the top three cards for blue and then, you know, doing mm-hmm. things that are other abilities, but being able to have that on those creatures, I think it'd be kind of sweet. But yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they touch on mutate again. So you think it'd be just a set thing, though, because it, it I th- one thing about mutate is like they get more powerful as you stack them up. Because then they keep, yeah. And so if you don't have a lot of them in a set, they're kind of like just a one shot. So I don't know if people like that or, again, Ikoria was something that I I don't have much of at all. So, Mm -hmm. because that's when I was right at the peak of pandemic was happening. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that peak of pandemic is right now, but that was right when everything was starting to go crazy. And so I just don't have any Ikoria. So I don't know how to really play with it. Oh, yeah. So what do you have for number six? I, uh, I'm going to steal this before you do. Ooh. So I have to master of time. Cause that's going to probably you be knew. 
Yeah. It had right. to be on your Fair list. Enough. There's no way it couldn't be on your list. Uh, <laughs> but Teferi Master of Time, we've talked about multiple times. This is also a one spec. Um, it should be in every blue deck because you can activate abilities anytime you can cast an instance. So you're drawing and discarding cards. You're, it, it's just an awesome card. It has removal kind of built on it because it phases creatures mm-hmm. out. And you're doing this at instant speed. The card's just ridiculous. Four mana to come out. Um, it's, you know, triggers this, the draw stuff. It's, it's a I fantastic honestly think card. They knew what they were doing in that they printed so many variations of it because they knew if they only did the pack, pack foil extended art. <laughs> if they only did the, the normal five. Yeah, I was just about, yeah, I was about to go through that all. It probably would be a $50 plus card at this moment. You know, like it's just that good of a card. But because they have, hang on a second, one, two, three, four, 14. five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 different versions of this because each of those altered arts, you know, with the different stuff, each also had a foil and a non-foil. So foil, non-foil, and then you... Of every kind. And then there was one with a promo pack, and that had a foil. Then you had the full art, alt art foil. Yeah. (laughs) Not foil. (laughs) It's just a ridiculous card. But yeah, so I know that's probably really high on your list if it wasn't number one. It's pretty high. (laughs) So I apologize, but I knew that I had to strike. Nah, you didn't get my number one, so I'm I'm fine with it. All right, so what's your number five? Uh, Is that where we're at? I think so. All right, yeah. Number five, uh, I went with Terror of the Peaks. Oh, I was so close to doing that one too. Right. I like that card I, a lot. Well, I mean, we hang out a lot, so we're gonna have <laughs> similar opinions. Like, have, I haven't seen you in almost a year. What are you talking about? We hang out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's been nice, but I, uh, oh, <laughs> good. For, I'm sorry, I interrupted your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pandemonium has been one of my favorite enchantments for a really long time, and it's not good. So I can't play it. Um, and I, you know, and war storm surge is too expensive. Uh, terror of the peaks is perfect. It can be an aggressive flying dragon that kind of half ass protects itself. And then it can just be really aggressive and it can be, um, you know, go over the top without having to attack. And I just yeah. really like the card and yeah, it's solid. It's a really good card. So it's uh, it's something that I have considered for every red deck. Did you get Did you get one yet? I I went out and purchased uh, a foil yeah, one. That's yeah. A, yep. I went and got a full art. I was like, I have to have this. Well, yeah. it went in my Daryl deck, so I was like, I have to get this card. Yeah, for sure. Yep, I agree with that. My my next one might be stealing something else from yours, but we'll see here. Ancient Green Warden. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Yeah, we're getting into probably not going to overlap anymore. Oh, you're about to get the weird ones or I'm going to be like, er? yeah, <laughs> no, nah, there's one. There's one weird one. All right. So ancient green warden is you can play lands from your graveyard. If a land causes you or causes a triggered ability, it does it twice. So we have our land harmonicon, but then playing lands from your graveyard just more spell, more permanence that we uh, adding to the mix to be able to play from your lands from your graveyard is nice. So it's, it's something I talked about before, but this card is just, it's going in every landfall kind of deck. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be in a landfall deck because if you're playing fetches and being able to bring that back, uh, that's always nice to have. And the double trigger, that you kind of have to work with. I mean, that has to be, a theme of what you're doing a little bit. Um, But I think this is just a solid card again for green. Green needs all the the help they can get. And landfall kind of lands in a lot of decks because it's, and it's Lowry's favorite. Yep. And I'm going with that in my number four section. Oh, good segue. What's your number four? I do put (laughs) some thought into talking. 
Uh, going with the the best two uh, landfall cards printed this year, which would be Omnath, Locus of Creation, mm. and Scoot Swarm. Yeah. So Scoot Swarm Mob. Yeah. The it's just Scoot Swarm. Is it Scoot Swarm? Oh, yeah, Scoot, Scoot Mob. Mob is the yeah. other. Yeah, that's right. Scoot Swarm is ridiculous. So, but like, Scoot Swarm is probably the best, just generic green landfall creature. The card can just be really, really overpowering. Um, as people have pointed out on our Discord, is that like you can mutate on it, and then it copies that mutate. It doesn't trigger the mutate, but just like if you have Gem Razor on your Scoot Swarm, and then it copies it, you have two four four tramplers. So like it's kind of a, a really cool um, effect, but it also waterfalls and. I know it feels like there's a lot of hate towards Omnath, but maybe it's gone since he's banned in standard. Um, <laughs> no, it's not gone. <laughs> it's really, really cool card. I think it's unique. Um, and uh, it's a really fun commander, at least how I built it. So, Because you built it so good. I did not say that. I don't know <laughs> if I built it so good. but it's Has it, has it lost yet? Yeah, it lost that game with uh, yeah. you and Trombley. Oh, that's right. I got out. It was a Tough turn. Uh, what was it? It was a turn two or three Omnath along with something else. And then oh, I just that was ran ridiculous. out of cards. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, what do I want to jump with next? Um, you know, I'll just say I, I like the free spells from Commander 2020. I know that a lot of people don't like the free spells, but I it's added an interesting twist to when people are playing to know that you even if somebody's tapped out, they can still mm-hmm. cast something for free. And it isn't just blue players anymore, it's all players. <laughs> it's not free spells just aren't <laughs> good free spells just aren't for blue players anymore. <laughs> right, that's, exactly. That's really what it is. Blue players are just mad that everybody else can do stuff for That's, free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because before it was a oh, freaking all the, the zero cost ones where you have to pay it when it's zero. Or well, they did have the uh, the red one that I think it's you get a second attack. I have that one. I don't, yeah, they're just no, not as those good are, as blue. That that version, even the blue one there is like so much better than the other ones. Yeah. So uh, I was happy with free spells. I also put in there kind of adding two, but uh, I'm I'm in my commander 2020. I liked Monoscape refractor i'm still surprised that that card just keeps going down in price so i've been picking them up as i go i'm mm-hmm. like yeah i'll pick them up for 99 cents oh they're 89 cents i'll keep picking I'll those up it's it just 89 cents it's just a it's a super sweet card that i think once command that t- commander 2020 is gone along with 2020 that eventually that card is going to go up because it's just it should be used in a lot of decks, having that ab- ability, yeah. especially if you're playing in your group that has gay as cradles and crazy utility lands, that should be in there because you can use other people's utility and lands. I, and I I do like the card for sure, but it's one that I just haven't really been able to fit into a deck. Mm. And so I think it, it's competing against like other mana rocks, which I've said in the and past. this one like, comes into play tapped, which kind of yeah. sucks. So I, I think that's its down. And I like my ramp to be at two. Like, if you're playing ramp at three, I think this card is very playable. Mm-hmm. Um, two? T- but two. It's kind of tough. All so right. So I, I do like it, though. Yeah. Number three for Lowry. This is my weird one. Uh, Brash Taunter. Which? I know that <laughs> what? <one. laughs> that is uh, five mana... One or it's four oh, yeah, and one red, like one one yeah. indestructible. <laughs> Stuffy doll on a stick, but fights. Yeah, you can ha- it fights, and then whenever it's dealt damage, you can have that deal to any target you choose. It doesn't even have to be at a player, right? Or is it just a player? Uh, just a player? Nope, target opponent. Yeah, fuck. Mm. All right. It's <laughs> but you're good. fighting. Yeah, yeah. So you can force you can it. Uh, you don't have to like pick the player at the beginning like Stuffy doll. Yeah. Um, it's still indestructible. Um, I, I really, it's one of my favorite cards in Naith. 
Uh, but also, Yay. like, it's made me want to rebuild old decks like uh, Savine. Like, it was in that. It would have been perfect in there. Um, I have highly I tried considered to put it, it in, in. Yeah. I tried to put it in Daryl, which I probably still should because I have so much mass damage. Mm-hmm. That I still might get it in there. But it got the cut because I was more trying to get through. But, yeah, it's such a good... It's such an upgraded stuffy doll, but that's the thing is it's for red. You know, yeah. stuffy doll can go in yep. any deck, whereas this is for a red that, deck. That is a big difference, too. It's just like five mana is just kind of like, ooh. Yeah. But I just really like it, um, and I can't I can't uh, defend it any other way. And I'm, I, I am surprised that it made it this high on my list as well. Yeah, number three. Yeah. Holy balls. That's <laughs> I was surprised there too, but it just kind of kept on. No, I like this better. I like this better. And it up there. So good job, Brash Taunter. You uh, tickled my fancy. <laughs> proud, of, proud of you. Uh, my number three, if I was doing numbers, uh, is not one that's on your list because you kind of told me beforehand. So I will use it now. But Nick's Bloom Ancient. Mm. Uh, that's the tripler, triple monitor for yourself. Every time I see this get out, and if it makes it around to that person's turn, that person is probably going to win the game. Yeah. So Cards there's that. <laughs> Jesus. It's just a silly, silly, awesome green card. Why can't green have more good stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's the best color in the world. So good. <laughs> so I don't really good. need to go into any more with that. It's just any of the triplers and even any of the other triplers are good too. I like mm-hmm. the red one, the triple damage there. There's... The triple helps a lot if you can get around and that survives. It's cray cray. You're sitting pretty. So, all right, what's your number two? When did I steal? I stole one from you with my. Yeah. Which one was that? What number? You're about to do it. I'm telling you, it's Teferi Master oh, of Time. This is my number two. <laughs> Huzzah! Hey, number two. <laughs> hey, number two. Um, oh shit! <laughs> that's all right. I am my own button. Hey, number two. And I uh, I got it. oh boy, I hear it now. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we already talked about the card. It's fantastic. Way to way to kill the the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a drum roll on your number one. Uh, you, all right. What's so your number two? What, let's see. What do I want as my number two? Um, you know, I may only have one more because I kind of did two at once there. Mm. So my number one, I guess, I do want to make some comments for the sets that I wanted to talk about there, but uh, my number one would be Bruvac. Bruvac, making mill possible for all us mill players. Everybody has to have a mill deck, and it's fun. Not everybody has to have it, but it's fun. I like the mill aspect to it. Problem is you still become a major, major target. sure. There's so many tools with it. Uh, I am very happy that Jumpstart started printing more because Bruvac's price came down. Uh, but Jaw has traded me his, so I'm very happy about actually legally being able to play Bruvac now. <laughs> we, okay. <laughs> I've been illegally playing with Bruvac, and I've felt guilty every time who's, winning who's with it. Who's the police officer <laughs> to come and get you in our play group? Is that me? Uh, Is that me? Is that why, I don't is know. That why you... Didn't care until I start playing with you guys. <laughs> well, we all are the police officers. It's normally, uh, hey, do you guys mind? Do you mind? Well, we aren't playing together. We're playing online, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I did play with it with Trombley, Jeremy, and number two at one point. Mm-hmm. So I was cheating. Mm-hmm. But anyways, Bruvac makes doubling to your mill and is just a fun commander. Yeah. What is, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's back it up, back it up. Drum roll. Number one. This will be no surprise if you have paid attention. It is Shadow Spear. Yeah, I knew that. (laughs) Card's crazy good. I love it. Yeah, that's that's your fave. Trample, lifelink, one plus one, super cheap to come out equipment. Uh, And then it takes, for one, it takes away indestructible and hexproof. And it doesn't have to be equipped. It doesn't have to be attached. It's just like an artifact and an equipment. That's f- I think you should write a li- love letter to Shadow Spear. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done uh, we haven't done that no, in a long time. 
because it was bad. Love letters? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were they were embarrassing. <laughs> but if you were to write a love letter, this would be the card. This right might now. be your favorite card. Um, it's good. Maybe of all time. Making, maybe. making eyes at it right now. <laughs> so sexy. So hey, you. And the card's crazy. About? I it goes in every deck if you want to. And I want to. So <laughs> I'm glad you're asking permission first. That's the gentleman way to do it. Do you want to? Because I want to. <laughs> so, oh, uh, all right. Well, a, a couple other notes I wanted to make of uh, sets that were reprint sets. Double Masters. I'm really happy that we got full art, alt art cards, which were pretty sweet, uh, and reprints, of course. And then also, same thing with Mystery Boosters. But more so our mystery boosters, the foil printings of those cards, of cards that are really expensive normally, has really brought down the prices on a lot of stuff. So I'm happy with the reprints and the foil reprints being dirt cheap. Hmm. So that's all I wanted to say. And that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> all right. Should we get to delaying what I was going to say? In the common tongue, it says one speck to rule them all. One speck to fight them. One speck <laughs> to bring them all. And in the darkness, fight them. It gets really, <laughs> that one gets really long. It's like the, I think you've said it before on that one. It's like the Peter Griffin yeah. family guy where it's like the first one's funny. And then it's like, ah, uh, okay, that's enough and then it keeps going it's like okay it's funny again uh all right it's just so funny this week, all the way what? through now because i know it's going that long <laughs> well I, and the funny thing is when i go to hit the button because they're right next to each other i don't remember which one's the long one <laughs> so i was like oh this is the short one and i hit it and i'm like as soon as gandalf starts talking it's like no this is the long one shit <laughs> All right, so we are doing, we're kind of just kind of working our way backwards. Uh, this one's going to be pretty familiar because we did Core Set uh, 2020, 2020, uh, when we did the rotating cards. Mm -hmm. And both of these, Lowry reminded me before we started, uh, I think we picked as, if I went, if you could pick one, spe if you could pick one, what would you pick? I think these were it. So yeah, whoopsies. we haven't changed. So at least we're consistent. Yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. So uh, I'll start this time since you got uh, the top yeah. ten stuff. Uh, mine is Leyline of Anticipation. We talked about this card before, and it, after you said that, and I started bringing up the stat numbers and everything with it. I remembered breaking that down and going through that. And I was like, oh, yeah. I knew that we had picked it as a rotating card, yeah. but now that you mentioned that, the uh, picking it as the one card. For all uh, so the we, this is <laughs> This is before we did one spec, and it is my one spec for that. But That's probably how one spec got inspired. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Ley Line of Anticipation, It's if it's in your opening hand, you can just put it in the battlefield, and you can play cast spells as though they have flash. That's awesome to have out. It doesn't matter if you get this mid-game, late-game casting it, and then being able to do that is awesome. 22,000 EDH rec decks. Currently, the promo foils are at $6. Uh, the other foils are still at 20 ish Oh, the promo 20, foil 18. is at 6 bucks. Promo foils are at 6 Yeah, fuck yeah. The Corset 2020s are at 9 um, but the, all the other foil printings of this, so magic 2011, that's at 18 bucks. It has been as high as 40, but was at a consistent 30 for a very long time. So I would definitely pick these up while you can, cause these are going to go back up there at some point. Yeah. And it's just yep. a used card in commander. Uh, does, is it used in any other set or any other formats? Not really. See. No. Yeah. Now, yours, on the other hand, is used in other formats, and that's kind of why you're going with this one too, right? Yeah, so Leyline of the Void, um, you know, same thing, and then it just removes all your opponent's graveyards, and they just don't get it. This is used in Modern, 
um, if that's going to ever become a thing. This has been reprinted at least one more time, if not twice, so that could hurt it. But the ceiling is much higher. I think its high has been like 40 bucks. Uh, and Leyline of Anticipation is like 20, 25 bucks for uh, highs. For non foils, yeah, right? Yeah, for non foils. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but you're also talking about foils with this. I right? think any version of the Void will yeah. be. I, I think they're all low and they'll at least double in my mind. So. Yeah, so your promo pack foils are 10, probably more like 9 on TCG. Uh, and you're right, the 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 currently the M20 or M11, those are at 30. So it's a $10 increase from what um Leyline of Anticipation. And like you said, it's in historic vintage histor- uh historic historic vintage historic, but it's Vintage, historic, pioneer, legacy. It's in used in all these other sets yeah. or all these other formats. So it's it's um, a highly used card, and it's a good one in Commander. Jaw used it against me one time back in the summer, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, that's that's really worked there in that situation. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, I, I think it just has a lot of potential. Like just the 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 ceilings pr- all pretty high. Um, so I guess I'm still on the boat of foils. I probably would think with that one. I I guess you could go both with that too, but one, one thing that I definitely have noticed at this point, um, is that pre-release and promo foils are just so much more expensive than just a non-foil. So if they are similar or close, definitely go pre-release or promo foil. Mm-hmm. So there's like there's there's started starting to become enough information like this has been going on since cons and they've always been relatively close, but now they're starting to kind of separate at this point from what I've seen. I'm I'm starting to go through all my cards and just looking up the price and um there there has definitely been differences. Um, Isn't it funny how that's kind of flipped with? pre-release foils and regular foils yeah where you know eight years ago five eight ten years ago the pre-release ones were the dirt cheap ones and the pack foils were the ones that were more expensive Mm -hmm. now i feel like it's flipped i feel like the pre-releases are the ones that there's lacking inventory and when things start to go it's the the ones that jump first is the pre-release because there's just more copies of all the other stuff out there. Yeah. And, and I think also having that extra like stampage there makes it harder to, mm-hmm. um, we had talked about yeah. that made it harder to make fakes of that. Yep. And then also, people and that, that was just, just our speculation, yeah. isn't it? Or did you read it somewhere? Also, uh, that said I don't it? recall I just, at that point. And like currently I think right that was now, just us discussing still, that. um, but also like people are still, there's more and more videos and pictures of just like people being really pissed with foils. Um, especially with commander legends. Like I watched somebody play dominoes with their bent ass foils. <laughs> yeah. They just set it up in a line and they pushed it over and took, 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 took. So it's funny because I get it. And I've have seen that, that it starts to curve like my commander Legends stuff and all that. But I don't notice it doesn't bother me as much because the ones that are worth more, go right into the binder and so they stay flat yeah. you know because they got tons of cards sitting in those but uh the ones if if they're not in the binder i normally have cards stacked next to them so i'm trying to keep them flat mm-hmm. but yeah it does kind of suck getting the potato chip thing and a lot of people are pretty pissed about it yeah i mean <laughs> they have been i feel like since ixalan at this point yeah um and i just now you know i don't the etched foils haven't been doing it as no, much. No, etched they? foils look fantastic. Yeah, I, I ended up buying two when I ordered my volcanic island that just came in. What, what? Oh, good for man. you. I'm trying to get to it. <laughs> oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I got Clark and then Yurlock, the the mana burn guy. I'm like, man, mm. these look so good. They're just yeah. crisp and flat. Um. And maybe that's more of what it is, is the 
oiling process of that isn't it's a lot different you know it isn't i mean i i did get that uh de pietro etch foil in my box i got that in braga uh-huh. and so maybe it'd be interesting to see what they did i should probably take some acetone to it because it's not really foil right and like no we, that's a it's a it's a little different. So I I, I a... wonder what it's like because the the foils like are just stickers. We you can literally peel foils off the card, um, and then when you when you acetone them, they become like a like a clear foil, like there's no mm-hmm. art on it. And those are, you know, it's kind of cool to see. But you can peel off the foiling, and then you get a white background too. I didn't realize it could do that with those. Yeah. So like that's that's the interesting thing and then also like double faced foils don't curve. And so hmm. you don't so it's kind of like maybe they should be foiling the backs of magic cards fuck too. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. <laughs> that would be really sweet actually. That's, we just solved your problem with magic. Yeah. Sponsor us. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah that'd be uh that'd be pretty sweet god we are we, we come up with some good i mean you come up with good ideas because no, your show no. <laughs> oh man all right so um uh, the one thing i didn't say is ley line the anticipation ley line of anticipation i think could get up to 20 plus easily if not reaching 30 plus I think Leyline of the Void starting at your 10 range, 9, 10 range easily breaks 30. I think you do have the, it, it depends. It depends on if these other formats come back yeah. a little bit. Yep. Uh, Commander is the driver right now. And so that's, I think that's my only advantage. Yours has the advantage of getting higher because of price history. Mm-hmm. Mine has the advantage of Commander play. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to have two voids see where they get two where they get lines. off. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, sorry, not voids, ley lines. So all right. Well, I think that should do it for this week, right? Yes. I agree. That was a all that right. was a good job by you. Good job. <laughs> I'm glad I made your show better. You uh <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 are the commander, Smith. I'll, I'll admit. Uh I would say that more people listen because of you than me. How about we go with that? <laughs> that, that? That doesn't make any sense at all. This is uh, this is me trying to <laughs> trying to, to dig yourself out of a yep. hole. <laughs> it's not working, is it? <laughs> you do the the happy Gilmore. You're smart. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm I'm worthless. Now that we got that out of the way, let's <laughs> <sighs> feel better. Thank you. <laughs> all right well that should do it for this week we will catch you guys next week thanks for listening see ya bye sega sega glad i got that flowery show no i don't know what happened there that was amaze balls i like how it started because it made the uh, transition very easy instead of like all right what did you do this week it's like (laughs) i am the commander smith (laughs) we can do this (laughs) 